You're listening to The Whole Church Podcast. Our efforts to educate and unite the church are made possible thanks to our sponsors on Patreon. Please consider joining them for $3 a month at patreon.com forward slash the whole church podcast, where you'll get access to our special bonus content like our too long didn't listen segment, where we ask our guests to summarize their episodes in under 10 seconds in case you don't have enough time to listen or just for fun. And coming up soon, we are running a campaign to try to earn $100 by the end of the year to start our new website. So be looking for our shop in the show notes to get your whole church shirts and be looking for other ways to donate as well. Thank you so much. Hebrews 11, verses 35 through 40 in the New American Standard Bible reads, Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release, so that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mocking and flogging, and further, chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword, they were went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, people of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts on mountains and sheltering in caves and holes in the ground. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us, so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Brandon Knight. Uh, This pericope of scripture comes after a long list of other heroes from the Old Testament, and it ends with the author trying to kind of tie together these legends with what the church is called to do right now and for all time forward. Do you think there's some sense in which we are called to unity not only with those present now, but with those of the past of the faith? I think so. If I remember right, in that previous context, there is that phrase, um, uh, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So I do Mm -hmm. think that unity is more than just the present context. We are to look to uh, the heroes of the faith in scripture. We're to look to church history of people who have gone on before us, which reminds me of a cheesy CCM song from the 80s. Uh, People who have gone on before us to faithfully serve the Lord and Mm -hmm. to unite ourselves to them, uh, whether that's through creeds, catechisms, the things that they've written or uh, pursuing a similar ministry path as them. Yeah, I think uh, both of us would feel some sense of unity with C.S. Lewis, though we've never met him. Sure. Yes. You know, our, one of my big heroes of the faith that got me into ministry is Billy Graham. You know, I've never mm-hmm. I've never met the man, but he is one of my biggest inspirations. And so I feel a bit of unity with him. Hey, everybody, welcome to the whole church podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, who you can tell is experiencing some allergies, but that's OK. They still allow me here so that I can announce the one and only, the man with the coolest hair in South Carolina, the greatest podcaster of all time, TJ Tiberius Juan Blackwell. Welcome back. Thank you. (laughs) And today, you might remember, we were supposed to be joined by Dr. Richard Raines. Um, Due to some scheduling conflicts, that didn't happen. So I asked Brandon a question that has nothing to do with what today's episode is going to be about. And Brandon also needed a filler episode. So we are here filling each other's time. We need filler episodes from time to time. We came up with a thought based off of an event I went to recently, and we're going to roll with it. And because all of us grew up old school Disney Channel, we thought, hey, just like that, so Raven, Hannah Montana got to do crossovers. We can too. So welcome back, the one and only Brandon Knight. And on that note, welcome back to my <laughs> seminary life. I'm your host, Brandon Knight. This is typically the show where I talk about the things that I'm studying in grad school right now. But I've do- started doing this thing where I am uh, feeling, trying to create gaps in my schedule. So that way, in between different classes, I can have just like a for fun, one-off episode that has nothing to do with anything and so for today's episode i have with me today from the whole church you know him you love him you've heard him on here at least twice before joshua knoll who mm-hmm. i have to call you joshua knoll but then refer to you <laughs> as josh josh knoll doesn't sound right you were on here two other times one time to ramble on about college stories from when you were in college and another time to talk about well the thing you're known for around here church unity and making his msl debut is apparently the man with the best hair in all of south carolina 
Mm-hmm. TJ, TJ, I'm so glad this worked out because you have not been on the show and I've wanted you here before. Yeah, I've just, uh, well, I, first I'd like to say it's a very low bar. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the hair or? For the hair, yeah. <laughs> oh, for the hair, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking, comparing yourself to other hosts. You're like, every other guest he's had was trash, so. <laughs> every other person who does a podcast is just off at it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks. I'm glad to be here. It's nice to go on more shows. It is. Yeah. And it's yeah. easy when you're friends with other people who have shows. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Way yeah. easier than it has to be when you don't have any friends. <laughs> yeah. When you don't know people. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't have friends, podcasting must suck. No. Yeah, that, that sounds bad. I am. Um, so, so so first, we forgot to introduce the um, my co-producer. I, I produce Whole Church, but for this crossover, I have a special mm. co-producer. Cooper. Cooper Knight. Producer Cooper is in yeah, the yeah. house. If you cannot <clears throat> hear all of the little crying, that's not TJ. That would be my six, almost six month old son. Yeah. Yeah. So well, welcome to the first time. Well, not the first time, but I think the first time he's been introduced mm-hmm. to the whole church podcast, Cooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And um, he is grinning, guys, by the way. <laughs> for, for both of our shows, you could go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podchaser, any of that to give us ratings. You know, more ratings helps people see the show, even if they're bad ratings. But also, Spotify's recently made it extremely easy to rate podcasts. When you're listening, there's literally just a little star thing above. And with two clicks, you can give us a five-star rating for My Seven Life star. and Whole Church. Or a one-star. because yeah, I, I wasn't going to tell them about I like that. One <laughs> algorithm, I don't them the algorithm you know, works either you know, way. <laughs> I only like you're going to give us stars. a one-star rating? You have to tell us why. Yeah, that's why I don't like them on Spotify. Go go to Apple Apple Podcasts or something so you can tell me why. Because it's interesting. Even if it's just, I've seen TJ's hair. It's not the best in South Carolina. <laughs> I would like to see that read. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let us know. Let me that's know what rating. I need to also, change. Also, a, a couple of it. announcements, if if Brandon's okay with it. Um, for, for Whole Church, we're going to be doing a campaign. We're going to try to start a better website for our show. So we're trying to reach $100 by the end of the year. We're opening up a store. I uh, might put that in the show links this time. It might be next time, but be looking for that. Um, but we already have where you can do one-time donations or go over to Patreon to help us raise that. Nice. And and also next year, we might be doing our first ever Whole Church Conference, which will feature Brandon Knight. And we'll keep you guys updated. But if so, there will be special codes for Whole Church listeners as well as My Seminary Life listeners to so get discounts on that. So Ooh. keep tuning in. Yes. And I guess if we're doing announcements, uh, you whole church listeners are getting a spoiler as to what's going on on my show, because this episode time travel is amazing, guys. This episode (laughs) is coming out on MSL on November 12th. This is coming out tomorrow on whole church. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you get a heads up to know that it uh, in the timeline over on my seminary life that means leadership 101 has just ended with an episode about the four leadership traits that we can learn from the life of david yeah, those and, three interviews you did with uh, pastor will and the other i can't remember the two pastors they were great i uh yeah pastor will was on the show and then my pastor ben and the one uh scott's is on the way should be coming yeah, out. Yeah. This well, I haven't heard it yet, but when people hear it on your end, it'll be out, and I it will, will have thought it was great. And you know what? There's another interview <laughs> that's coming out in that order as well, but um, that one, time travel's confusing. Okay, yes. yes following, <laughs> following this episode, though, over on MSL, is going to be the launch of our brand new series, Intercultural Ministry, where we're going to be talking about the importance, of, the importance of other cultures and understanding people's different... Diverse backgrounds and how I need to, uh, we all need to understand that and embrace that in order to minister better. Going to be looking to have a couple missionaries on the show to talk about their ministry as well. So it should be good. Wow. Yeah. And uh, for those My Seminary Life listeners, that reminds me of an episode we did on Whole Church. Uh, It was one of our roundtables we did on identity. We kind of talked some about how different cultures play a part of the whole church scene. So check that out. Also, so everyone's aware, uh, because this is coming out tomorrow, minimal minimal editing will be happening so you guys are hearing this pretty much raw yes yeah yeah and uh since since we since we're already stuck in the wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff um just shout out to all my doctor who fans i have a silly question that is time related and there's gonna be two stipulations with this one is that tj has to go last because he'll be too good at it 
And uh, the second one is, uh, is something I forgot already. There was, oh, we're going to assume no harm will come to you, no matter what your answer is. No harm will come to you. Okay. You can go not any place, but any time, do a nature walk in any time era, just to see what nature is like in that era. Just enjoy it, maybe go camping, you know, whatever. Which time era would you choose? I have a couple in mind. Do you want me to go first, Brandon? Um, no, I, I can think of two right off the bat. Yeah, it's hard to pick. I, I can think of two. One would be, and it's since you said the disclaimer of no harm will come to me, both of these will work. The one <laughs> would be Europe during the war, Second World War, because that's Lewis and Tolkien and but you're they're doing around, a they're you writing. Can't see the people. Well, I, I would just nature. like to know that they're around. <laughs> I still want okay, to know they're fine, around. Fine, but fine. more on the nature walk side, probably sometime in the prehistoric because it will be pretty much all nature and some uh, dinosaurs roaming around too. More hopefully. specific. Which dinosaurs do you want to see? You have to get a little oh, bit more specific. <laughs> a little bit more specific? I don't know dinosaur stuff very well. So I'm going to say whichever era allows me to see a stegosaurus, whatever one that one falls into. I don't know T these things. TJ, what era is that? I don't know these things either. Pretty sure it's pretty All sure. right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. For those who don't know, this is, TJ is like biology, dinosaur, all that stuff. Like like that's some of his, his jam. It's his bread and butter we went to for this uh, for this silly question. I have two as well, and they're both similar. Oh, it's the um, late Jurassic Act. <clears throat> One of the few oh, dinosaurs okay. in Jurassic Park that actually belong there. All right. Oh, weird. So, my two. One would be right before World War II. I want to see what nature was like before we started dropping atomic bombs and stuff. I want to see if I can tell the difference. Okay. The other one would be right before the biblical flood, whether you think that's a worldwide flood or a specific located flood, uh, there's a, other flood stories all around the world around the same time were given. So I think geographically things had to be different before them. Sure. And I want to know what just like, like what trees, like the actual outside part, not even the animals necessarily. What does it look like? I'm really curious. Okay. All right, Teach. Take right. us away. Uh, so I would probably choose the Cambrian era, the Cambrian period. Uh, it was the, the first period in the Paleozoic era. It is hmm. before the dinosaurs. It's before okay. trees. Uh, sharks almost existed. It's crazy. Oh, I got to know what that looks like. Hmm. Yeah, sharks are older than trees, by the way. What? Yeah. And would you be on the grass. paleo diet then? I'd have to be. Do -do yeah. Sorry. I hate myself, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh, man. That would be super cool. Yeah, Grass, yeah. sharks, they're both mm -hmm. along the trees. So that being said, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this off and just see where we all go. Uh, this is freestyle, no outline, with an ADHD guy, everyone beware, no edits. <laughs> no edits. So here, here we are, here we are. Um, I, over the last weekend, uh, met a lot of people, did a conference, uh, Trip Fuller's conference, if you're familiar with his podcast, and I met a lot of Eve progressive, more liberal people, because as the church unity guy, if anyone invites me to anything, especially if it's outside of my own beliefs, I'm like, well, dang, count me there as long as I can afford to be there or you can afford for me to be there. <laughs> one of the two. So I, uh, I encountered a lot of beliefs that I don't agree with, uh, that were challenging in a lot of ways. I, I challenged to rethink some of my own ideas and my own theologies and stuff in some ways. In other ways, I was like, wow, that's just, uh, that's just wrong guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it made me question, uh, because when you go to some of this more liberal theology, especially when you're thinking like process theology, that kind of stuff, different atonement theories, you're going back to some of the other basic questions, which gets at first tier church unity things, which made me think, well, we, we have to do this, especially since we have to do a filler episode, since we couldn't get with Dr. Richard Rings. And... <laughs> And my thought process was, it was really interesting to hear people at this thing that called themselves Christians who didn't necessarily believe in God. Um, I met people who were highly advocating that God be referred to as a woman. Um, the questions get brought up of when did, what, where is salvation lie in the life of Jesus? Was it the moment he was incarnated? Is it through his teachings or is it through the cross? Because not everyone necessarily believes in penal substitution. Having grown up almost exclusively in conservative Pentecostal kind of Baptist backgrounds, a lot of these I might have heard mentioned in passing, sure. but I never gave any serious thought to. 
even hearing them, a lot of them, I'm like, yeah, I'm not convinced. But uh, yeah, a few of them, I still saw, I saw where it made enough sense, if that makes sense. Okay. But it still wasn't convinced. But I was like, these aren't dumb people. These are really intelligent people with these sure. ideas. Sure. Which at least means I should give time to think about it. And also means I have to then rethink what do we define as first tier Christianity and who better to think through that with than Brandon Knight from my seminary life, the, the mm. expert of all things seminary and theology, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> the world's most renowned theologian. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not until Whoa. the podcast is over. Yeah, yeah, that's Brandon at the end of the podcast. Yeah, right. yeah. This this is going to be really We're transformative for you, Brandon. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move over, uh, NT. Right. <laughs> uh, Wayne Wayne grew who? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. So so Brandon, what what is first tier Christianity? What do we have to believe to be called a Christian? Well, I mean, I think the interesting thing about the tier system is that. It is necessary. It is helpful because we oftentimes want to lump everything into one fist of we need to believe everything equally in value. Um, But in actuality, like one, that's an exhausting way to live. And two, there are some things that the Bible doesn't speak on or doesn't speak very clearly on when it comes to first tier issues. To me, I would say you have to start with. You have to start with Jesus. You have to start with the gospel. And for me personally, I'm not using any like sophisticated theology terms here, but for me personally, if Jesus is just a guy, if Jesus is just a good teacher, a wise rabbi, if he is not the son of God, then we're missing the mark on a first tier issue. I will start the bar Mm. off there. What do you guys think? Agree. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, I, I think, well, for one, I would think God has to exist. Yeah, sure. You know, there has sure. to be a God well, so yeah. that Jesus can also be God. Mm-hmm. Tier um, zero issue, perhaps. Yeah. It's an assumption the Trinity, I might even put the Trinity at tier two. I don't even think you necessarily have to agree with me about the Trinity. But you have to believe that there is a God and that Jesus is also God incarnate in some way, in some meaningful way. I uh, I find it interesting. Uh, these you had you mentioned that some people were adamant that you referred to God as a woman, and this is one where I have I have wrestled with my own theology on this topic because in Scripture it appears to use modern terminology that God's preferred the God the Father's preferred pronoun and the Holy Spirit's preferred pronoun seems to be masculine. He. Although there are parables in the scriptures that Jesus teaches where God is personified as a woman. The uh, woman with the lost coin that is nestled in between the parable of the lost sheep and the prodigal son where the masculine figure is God. So the assumption would be then that this woman is God in the story. You know, I don't personally think that God is is a woman you know when jesus is teaching the or when jesus meets the woman at the well in samaria in john chapter 4 he says god is a spirit so is god a man is god a woman is god non-binary like these are i think legitimate questions that we can wrestle with again the preferred pronoun seems to be masculine in the in the original languages and Jesus has a physical male body. That seems to be pretty evident. But on the spirit end, I think there is a there's room for a conversation, at least, on these things. Yeah. In the Old Testament, it even has um, where Isaiah, and especially in Isaiah, you see a lot of just as a mother nurses her child, I will comfort you kind of stuff. And God even refers to himself as nursing the people of Israel, mm-hmm. which is one of those things that guys can't do, you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. To me, that's yeah. that's tier three. You can think God is whatever gender. He's okay. all powerful. Yeah, I, I, I believe that, well, also when you go to Genesis, he made us in his image, man and female. You know, right. so I, I think that he must necessarily have both attributes. And to me, and this might be a stretch, I, I would even say the, the fact that it usually says he is almost a coincidence. Uh, you have okay. to have a pronoun there and that just sure they at that time were more, you know, patriarchal. So mm-hmm. they just thought of he more often when they wrote. Sure. 
It's probably why we get taught in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. Like, Yeah. Well, it, it does refer to him as a father as well. I just think mm-hmm. uh, if you look at Isaiah, it's also, I would say, appropriate to think of him as a mother. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's places for both. Yeah. Especially when you think of the phenomena, which is something they brought up, that a – a mother goes through the birthing process. A mother does the creating thing in a way that a man doesn't necessarily. Mm-hmm. So in that thing, they experience this kind of co-creation with God in a way that I might never experience, which is, might which is beautiful never. in a way. Yeah. I, I assume I might never, never experience. <laughs> might never. But yeah, you know, who knows? Maybe, outside of maybe an I get alien, reincarnated. And <laughs> outside of an alien situation, <laughs> this might not happen. Not edited. Like, hot, 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 um, <laughs> not edited. Not <laughs> edited. Here's what it's like, guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I yeah that that's less important to me. The, the, the gender oh, yeah. thing, okay. the the name thing itself, and you know, to backtrack a little bit, uh, we've talked before on our show about the difference of Christian unity, unity, and being at peace with. The Bible mm-hmm. calls for all three, mind you. Okay. So whether or not I can say someone is a Christian or not, for example. To all of us, we agreed that they have to believe in some form of incarnation with Jesus, that Jesus wasn't just a teacher. Yeah. If they do think Jesus was just a teacher, we are still called to have peace with them, even though that wouldn't be Christian unity, because that to us is outside of the bounds of Christianity. We're still called to have peace with them. And the question is, what does that look like when they're calling themselves Christians? We don't think of them as Christians, but we still need to have peace with. Okay, Branding, world's greatest theologian, go. (laughs) Wait, what's the question? <laughs> All right, fine. It wasn't TJ. Really. <laughs> TJ, how do we have peace with other people who call themselves oh, okay. Christians if we can't consider them Christians? Uh, it's simple. because of our own boundaries. Uh, just don't bring it up. Genius. I mean, there is room for that. I think I've talked about before on here, preaching at churches where there are there are beliefs that I don't have, but I'm willing to meet with them in unity to preach and supply their pulpit, I just don't have to talk about the issues because to me, they're a lower tier issue. Yeah. And I mean, um, just, just for the sake of it, uh, since, since TJ called it a tier three, we'll, I, I'm okay rolling with it as a tier two or three. I'm calling it two and a half. Brandon, where are you putting the, where are you putting the goddess female tier? The goddess female? I think I would put it two only because I could see this becoming a bigger issue in the future. Yeah. I That's could fair. see this becoming more of a let's Rewrite put our the Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. That's fair. The song so, is worse, though. God the is song for me is tier one. If you like the song, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> because of its theology or because it just sounds dumb? It's terrible. It's a horrible song. Okay. It's, fair it's enough. Not actually biblical. No one it's Ariana Grande, it. right? Yeah. It's Ariana Grande? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you shouldn't listen to it. So <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll go with that then since we're saying – two and a half basically sure uh, it's one of those it, it's important to know hey they can be a christian and have a different idea of god than me necessarily mm-hmm. i just have to know where those bounds go and i think the challenge is figuring out how to navigate some of these really big differences in a way that's meaningful for christian unity for unity and for peace with everyone mm-hmm. just you know the difference christian unity is we are brothers and sisters. We are just the same as being blood related. I consider you a Christian. The word unity means we are of one mind. So we are of one mind in Christ. Unity, just unity, is we are of one mind of something else. So mm-hmm. I can work in unity with people who aren't Christians to clean up the park downtown, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, being at peace with everyone is simply uh, basically just not being a jerk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, uh, I, there's just this simple of, oh, you don't believe in God. You're not a Christian. I don't feel the need to attack you. In fact, I shouldn't attack you. I should still love you because God loves everyone. I'm called to love everyone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's going to look different than saying we're both brothers and sisters. We're both Christians. Here, come take communion with me. No, that, that that's different. So you brought up a lot of examples of like incarnation, atonement related things that came up that made you think, was there any, I'm curious, was there any talk about the problem of evil, sin? Was there anything that came up in that area as well? Some, not, not as much, not as much. A, a lot of it, um, that, that just what I was around was a lot more of, these are people who are of a 
less approved theologies. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, people who have more traditional beliefs, like I, I assume most of us probably fall more on the traditional end here, a lot of the more traditional belief people treat people with these theologies and these ideas terribly. We're jerks to them. Sure. So when yes, they get together, are. a lot of the time, the event is more God loves you, reminding each other of love, thinking about the experience of mm-hmm. God, and just kind of being in a place where you're accepted and you have permission okay. to be different, which I think is important for people to have, even if I disagree with them. Sure. Yeah, we need that s- some form of camaraderie. You know, you're talking a lot about unity here on the show, but just to have a place where you can get together, if, even if you have different views, to just hang out and share a meal together or whatever, you know, you end up doing at these things. I was invited, but kind of broke. But it sounded like you got your money's worth for this uh, conference because oh, yeah. Josh has like a stack of 30 books yeah. or something. Well, I told them how much I disagree. Well, this is this is how that happened. This is fascinating. They had a, a publisher at this event, right? And uh, he had a whole bunch of books he was giving out for everybody because that's just how he was sponsoring the event, I guess. And I wound up and he was like, yeah, you could choose five books, whatever. I was one of the first ones there. And I was like, I don't want to choose five. Here's what I want you to do. I gave him some of my background. Well, you know, I grew up conservative Pentecostal, mostly still Pentecostal and becoming more Lutheran slowly. Uh, Pick out the five most challenging books you have for me. Hmm. And when you tell a publisher to do that, you leave with a lot more than five books. Nice. (laughs) So I got like 15 then. And then throughout the event, I ended up with like 10 more for myself and like 10 for TJ somehow. Yeah. (laughs) So if you sure. (laughs) So kids, the moral of the story is if you ever want to walk away with more free stuff, just work the work the person at the (laughs) counter a little bit. They'll give you the hookup. I wasn't even trying to do that. I genuinely just wanted the five most challenging. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, you got the 15 most challenging books, right? I'm working on it, guys. I am working on it. And let me tell you, they're challenging. Um, So so I brought up there's so there's three main things I wanted to get get you guys takes on. And uh, we haven't forced TJ to talk enough, so we should force him to talk some. Oh, well, I have my own point I'd like to bring up. Let's go ahead and hear it. So I feel like uh, one point that gets overlooked a lot, especially Mm -hmm. these days, is uh, Romans 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, Romans 13, 1 and 2 say, obey the government for God is the one who has put it there. Uh, yada yada. Okay. Yeah. No one talks about that enough. Uh, okay. I feel like it's because pretty much yeah. everyone agrees at one point or another that the government sucks. That's true. True. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those that's verses what, that I think it's very convenient when it works for you. And yeah, then those can, verses when your party is the one in charge. That's when you remember that verse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no and one ever when brings you don't it up. Like it, no one ever brings it up. Yeah. Ever. That's true. It's like, hey, that's God true. said. Listen to the government, okay? Like he said that. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. He did like say God that. God said that. Yeah. Yeah, not like Paul. Hmm? Paul. No, yeah. Paul didn't say it. God. God said it. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't Moses. God. <laughs> Thanks for taking a shot at the Paul issue. For no reason. It. I was going to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Church unity also, guy. <laughs> it says there is no oh, government that God has not put in power. So what are Christian missionaries doing in North Korea? Mm, hopefully helping the people <laughs> yeah hopefully that's all right yeah or starting a crusade let's do the crusades again oh yeah that's a joke that's, that's where i'm going have you guys done have you guys done crusade episodes before no mm, no should not we yet. sort of we not talked yet. about it once <laughs> oh really Briefly. anyway so the three things i wanted to get you guys y'all stake on when, you, when you're talking about liberal theology and you're talking about the major differences i think it comes down to First tier, three first tier issues in my mind that you have to have a line. And I want to see where you guys draw the line on this. Uh, First, and we've talked about this one before, the Bible. You know, a lot of you more liberal things don't believe the Bible is inerrant. They believe it's helpful. They believe maybe it's from God. Some of them will say infallible, but not inerrant. There's a lot of different beliefs on how the Bible matters when you get into some of this more liberal theology. Where do we, as more conservative theologians, draw the line of this is where we still consider them Christian and have unity as opposed to not Christian and have unity? <laughs> Romans I, 13. That, that's where TJ draws the line. Do they, do they agree with that? Oh, funny. So TJ starts every conversation. What's your view on Romans 13 yeah. now? That, that <laughs> cold open you do with the verse, just do Romans 13 all the time. Every time, from now on. Yeah. Right. I think with the Bible... Uh, I personally, I think 
One thing that would elevate it as a significant issue in my mind is how equal is the Bible with other religious text in that person's mind? Because to me personally, the Bible has to be the word of God Mm -hmm. over the other religions, religious writings. Now, I will also say I do believe, I think it's Aquinas who coined the all truth is God's truth. I think that was Aquinas. So I do believe that. What? Did you not know about TJ's uh, constant? I hate uh, Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. I knew one of you. I knew one of you. (laughs) I knew one of you was not a fan, but, (laughs) but I guess I don't have strong enough opinions one way or another. I just know he said this and I I want It's a lot funnier for TJ to have a beef with a dead guy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he does not have unity with uh, people (laughs) from the past. That's why we did that verse at the beginning. (laughs) Obey the government. Obey the government. Don't listen to Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. Obey the so government. I don't do talk th- to dead people. <laughs> don't talk to dead people. <laughs> that one's in the Bible too. Uh. Um, I do think that there is some truth to that quote, though. That there can be instances where there is some semblance of truth in another religion or religious writing that kind of sounds like a Christian thing. Um, mm-hmm. But to me personally, the Bible has to be the supreme word of God, the first. It has to be first hmm. for us. What can, do I, you guys? can I challenge you a little bit on that? Go have, go for it. Yeah. Would you be willing to have Christian unity with Catholics, for example, who have equal footing with scripture and tradition? And in fact, I think they would even say tr- scripture is part of tradition. On a tradition side, I think I would have to work case by case. I'm not willing to put a full blanket, yes, it's fine, or no, it's not over it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do know that in Catholic in the Catholic church and also in other more liturgical high church uh, groups, like there are traditions and there are symbolisms that really matter to Mm -hmm. draw people to worship. And I think when it's more in that vein, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Gotcha. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah. TJ Uh, scripture. How much do they have to believe it? How much they have to believe it? That's not yeah, the like, question. That was like, not what you said. No, like no, where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line on unity as far as different beliefs concerning well, the Bible? I think largely it's important to consider other religious texts as what they are. You know, they're high value texts. There's a lot of information <laughs> in there that is helping millions of people live their lives. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. In a non, non-Christian way. Yeah. But it's good to read these books. It's good to learn from these books. It is not good to think of them as the on the same level of the as the Bible. I think, hmm. okay. unless hmm. Christianity is not your religion, in which case, welcome That'd to the be show. Weird for you. To... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so man, I'm I'm going to be the liberal of the group on this one at least. I they can be close. Is my I'm stance? Gonna, by the I'm way, I'm going to answer this. Say that. Yeah, I, I'm going like, right to answer this a little bit different than these two. And not address other religious books at all. I think you have to believe the Bible is God ordained. Whether or not you think that means it's inerrant, whether or not you think that means it's infallible, whether or not you think that means I only believe the book of John. I I will be very aggravated. I will try to convince you otherwise in a kind and loving way. If you talk to me about it, I'm going to try to convince you otherwise because I think you're missing out on truths of God. If you don't at least think the Bible is infallible. So I'm going to do this a little bit weird. And, and and mind you, part of why I have this stance is because I take the Bible so seriously. So when Paul writes in the Bible, the requirements of salvation to be believing in Jesus Christ and confessing your sins, I take that to mean as that's all you got to do. Okay. So I will put the God Bible being ordained so that we're talking about the same Jesus, the same God and all that, because you believe there is importance of the Bible. That's tier one for me. Whether or not you think the Bible is infallible, meaning does it say everything that God wanted it to say? I'm putting tier two. Mm. Tier three is where I'm putting inerrancy, which is just if you can think there's a typo in the Bible, you know, some error or something tiny, you know, they got the dates wrong here. That's going to be down, down a little bit further for me. I don't, I don't care. Whoa. I mean, there's got to be like something he left out, right? I was a long book, but there's got to be at least one thing. There. <laughs> there's got to be like one thing. The book of Enoch say, should have been in there. I'm just going to say the book of Enoch should never have been that, removed. I would be willing to uh, give grace and live in unity with somebody who has different views on authorship. 
mm -hmm. the different books. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. sometimes because we don't we weren't there. We don't know these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would say in certain cases, like if we're going to have a disagreement over who wrote Ecclesiastes, where it says right. mm -hmm. the preacher over and over and over again, like I just err on referring to the author of Ecclesiastes as the preacher, because that's how that person identifies themselves. Yeah, so, same here. Was it Solomon? Was it someone writing a biography about Solomon? I don't know. I'm not an Old Testament scholar and Old Testament scholars disagree on that. So right. same with like the book of Job. You know, I, yeah. I have no idea. Hot you know, take for the episode the of Job. No. Uh, if you look at to me, it's that's not something that well, it matters, but it's not something that I place a lot of weight in. Yeah, sure. Daniel yeah. could have written the entire Bible. <laughs> it would be the same Bible to me. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I disagree with most of my conservative. You know, that changes some things contextually. Friends, right. when it comes to authorship of, but especially you know, Old Testament, I'm saying, like if none of the other words changed, and Daniel wrote the whole thing. That's the same Bible. Yeah, sure. What do you think of like uh, you know in other traditions like Catholic or I think also in Orthodox churches where they have additional books? I think they the have like Apocrypha, the Apocrypha. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, they're very interesting. It's kind of like how I was saying earlier about other religions' religious texts. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how they view the Apocrypha. Uh, they aren't the Bible. They are important additional material. Yeah. Yeah. I've read through the Apocrypha before, and it is an interesting historical look at a time that we don't have in our Bibles. It's predominantly like late, the late time of the exile into the um, intertestamental period. You know, you're looking at like first and second Maccabees there where yeah. Greece is on the rise, taking over the world before Rome takes over. It is, it is an interesting look. And when you read it, there are times where the books of the Apocrypha, like there's there's biblical truth in there. And then there are times where it's like, well, I understand why this did not get included. This is pretty, pretty out there compared to the rest of Scripture. Yeah, like the book of Enoch, I think, is mm. not actually even in Apocrypha anymore. I'm not sure. I don't. I think that is part of the even larger pseudepigrapha, which is just a collection yeah. of writings of people who claim to be certain biblical authors, but they they're they're not, and they're typically not. Um, they're pretty far off of our like biblical standard for what yeah. we teach. Yeah, it's like Enoch and Jasher and other stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, those are more interesting to me because Enoch was in the Bible at one point, but that's not what right. this episode's about. No, it's not. Or it could be. It's a filler episode. Uh, hey, we can make it whatever we want at this point. Yeah, Josh disconnected. This is my show now. <laughs> hmm. Y'all lost me for a second, but we're not editing. TJ, you did forget something. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of how we were talking about viewing other religions is how Catholics and Orthodox view the Apocrypha and that it's important but not necessarily equal to the Bible. That's only partially true. Orthodox view it that way. Catholics do view the Apocrypha as part of the Bible. So. I oh, did yeah. want to just throw that part out there, okay. which is it's weird that they differ on that because they started so close. But whatever, I digress. We have two other big ones I wanted to jump on. Uh, one of them we sort of already touched on, but I'm going to start with the other one. Atonement. Brandon, what do we have to oh. agree with about atonement? Do we have to agree that it was the cross? Do we just have to agree that it was Jesus? Do we just have to agree that it happened? Do we have to agree on anything? Limited atonement only. I'm kidding. Um <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to just wanted to take a Calvinist. Just wanted one Calvinist oh, joke. Man. Thank you, everybody. Thank you and good night. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. I I think you have to believe in an atonement that that is there. Yeah. Um, and I would say it does last. <laughs> does last. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't believe you can lose your atonement. Um, whether that's a first tier Ooh, issue or not, I'm that? working out in my head as I speak it out loud. Okay, but yeah. Um, yeah, it has to happen. It is Jesus substitutionary. See, you're asking me questions that I, I've never had to actually do the tier process before. Yeah. With yeah, some it's of difficult. Yeah. It is difficult. You want to let TJ go for a little bit while you're thinking? Yeah, well, let's see. Sure. He, he's got a, he's got a ramble in him or two. Yeah. So to me, atonement itself is a first tier issue it has to have happened the sure. manner of atonement can be second tier for me does it have to be jesus to be first tier it doesn't have well yes yeah yes. i'm thinking that too i'm thinking i'm putting atonement with jesus as first tier okay i don't care enough about the rest to put it anywhere i, I honestly okay which is which is funny i know substitutionary atonement is the the go-to belief of most traditional 
Christianity, sure. especially us who are more on the conservative side, which is just that Jesus took upon our sins while he's on the Christ, died with our sins, came back without them, and left them all in hell. You know, and you're like, let me just drop these off real quick. Um, Jesus went to hell? Is, that is a whole other different thing. A, a lot of people will I, say yes. I think most people will say yes. Uh, I, there's love, a, I love that conversation, but we don't have time is, for that. What is that called? <laughs> what is that doctrine called? It's based off of a scripture in one of Paul's writings, though. Yeah, I can't think of what that one's called. Though. I listened to a whole podcast about it the other day. I can't think of what it was called. Anyway, um, but but also one thing I hadn't even I haven't even encountered other beliefs on this until recently. But the idea that God taking on humanity, being incarnate at all, is what saved humanity, and He experienced death so that He can relate to those who are the persecuted, who are the downbeaten, so that He can relate to all of humanity, including the experience of death. And that's just the result of extreme love anyway. I got to say that's compelling. I don't I don't agree with it, but that, that's a compelling argument. You do have to have incarnation. It does yeah. have to be. Uh, Jesus has to be truly God and truly man. Yeah. So Jesus being truly if, God. Yeah. I don't know okay. if atonement is just the incarnation, but you do have to have the incarnation. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, and I'm just saying like for me, if you think the incarnation is when atonement happens, that is not a first tier issue to me. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> if you think it's then or on the cross, whatever. That's third tier for me, even. I will say, this is something I keep forgetting to say throughout all of this. Keep in mind those listening at home who are like, I've never heard of these things before. This is stuff that people have been believing in throughout church history for 2,000 years. These beliefs, it's, this isn't something that some bearded guy sipping a drink came up with <laughs> over the weekend like this yeah. is this is stuff that church fathers believed we all love augustine until we actually start reading augustine and then realize oh there's some stuff here that doesn't quite yeah line up anymore but that can i yeah can i Go add ahead. on there i th that, that's where i get aggravated people throw out the word heretic way too quickly a lot of these beliefs that might be wrong might be radical mm -hmm. that doesn't make them heresy <laughs> that is something different Look up the word before you call someone a heretic. But it's I mean it every time I say it. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, me too, but <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said it. So incarnation, or not incarnation, excuse me, atonement. You talked about scripture. What was one of the other ones that you wanted to? Well, wait, wait, where did you fall? on the? On, what is first tier for atonement issues for, oh. for Brandon? Oh, first tier. I would say, yes, first tier, it has to be Jesus. I guess whether you want to get... At, I get it at the cross or in the incarnation. I guess we can we can be friends. We can be yeah. friends on that. Yeah, yeah. Christian unity, first tier. If you don't think it what happened with Jesus specifically, we're getting outside of Christian unity and into unity. Oh no, the danger zone. Um, okay. Outside of that, the last one we already talked on this some. God, where do you draw the line on God? Can they believe whatever they want about God? Whoever they want about God, etc. Actually, yeah. I have a take. That's something I want to share before before I let you guys answer. I think this might help all of us a little bit. We've had uh, Pastor Gary Atkins on the show before. Um, he's from the denomination I grew up in, Church of God of Prophecy. And one of the reasons he believes scripture is first tier for him is because, and he said this on our show, if without scripture, we might be talking about two completely different Jesuses. And that got me thinking of this analogy of if you and I both say we know TJ, but you think TJ is eight feet tall. I don't has, think we know different TJs. You're just wrong. <laughs> you know, like we still know the same TJ. South Carolina. Yeah, I think he has the best hair in South Carolina. You think his hair looks garbage. We still know the same TJ. You're yeah. just wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, we can disagree on some things, but to an extent, if if I'm saying TJ is a loving, kind person who's always there for his friends, and you're like, actually, TJ is the biggest jerk of all, and just spits on everyone's face he's ever met. At, at some point, we have to say we're talking about two different TJs. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. And, and for me, for, for Pastor Gary, he would say the Bible, that's why the part of why the Bible's first tier for him, we have to agree on exactly what the Bible says about Jesus. That's it. For me, I, I give a little bit more wiggle room. If you want to say Jesus, TJ, that Jesus is five feet tall, <laughs> T Jesus is five foot tall. Cool. I don't care. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. the height of Jesus. Four, six. Um, if you want to say six. God is Four, a woman. Six. Um, and I think he can be either gender, or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. But there is, there does have to be a level where we do agree on who God is. 
Mm-hmm. What is that level, Brandon? Ooh. What's it? Yeah, just silence. That's always good for podcast content. Um, it is. I agree. It's really good. <laughs> good show to help you sleep at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the whole church podcast. Anyway. Whole um, church ASMR. <laughs> That's a Patreon special. I would say when it comes to God, God ex- has to exist. We have to agree there. Yeah. God has to exist. <laughs> um, so you're really making me peel back the onion here. You're really making me peel back the ogre yeah. here because I'm like, where does Trinity fall in this? Where does, you know? Yeah. Do you want TJ to answer first again? I will say, oh, you know what? I'm going to say this. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Um, God has to be somewhat personable. What do you mean by that? Not an energy or a force or a power. But I think if we're reading the same scripture, we have to co- come to the conclusion that God has a personality and relates to humans. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can to, to get at one of the most common liberal theologies is process theology. Okay. Which is basically this idea, God can change, and God isn't necessarily outside of time. He's aware of all the possible outcomes of the future, and he's co-doing some of this with us. Where does that fit on the tier for you? Because I know you do not agree with process theology. Just for those who, who are wondering, just to clarify, Brandon is not a process theologian. I am, I am not a process theologian. The rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. Also, it sounds a lot like <laughs> Hang the Conqueror. Um, yeah, would I work? Would I minister with somebody who has process theology? I think I would. Um, yeah. I, personally, I I don't think. I mean, I've had that. I guess to some extent, though, I have had that view of knowing all the possible outcomes. That is a way that I used to try to think of um, sovereignty and election and all those type of things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm willing to completely toss out somebody who is a process theologian. Uh, I think it could lead to a lot of good conversations and we could probably minister well together. I just, I guess process theology is a little bit better though than the people who want to say the God of the old Testament is a completely different God than what we see in the new Testament. That is somebody I would have a little bit harder time working with, but somebody who wants to say God has grown or changed from the old testament to the new testament i'm more drawn to i don't know i'm I'm gonna gonna put a radical take out there mind you i'm still on the more conservative side here but when i'm when i'm thinking about the more traditional side of things we tend to say god is unchangeable and the language when the bible says god changed his mind that kind of stuff we just say well that is metaphorical whatever that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think process theologians are just doing the other side of the coin where they're taking that part literal, that God changed his mind, literal, and then saying the parts where God knows all futures, God is omnipresent without time and all that, and saying some of that's metaphorical. Hmm. I don't think there's more scripture for one side or the other necessarily. Now, I still fall where I fall, but I'm not looking at this thinking that is a radical argument or that is completely false. I'm looking at this going, that makes a lot of sense. Man, it's incredible that you can still be wrong. (laughs) (laughs) I think when the modern Testament comes out, the third testament mm-hmm. uh, then i will be a process theologian okay yeah that's until fair. then <laughs> you yeah, can believe that that's fine yeah i, I do like oh sorry go ahead finish tj no i'm done okay <laughs> unless you want me to talk about how tall jesus was it was three cubits a cubit is a foot and a half he was four foot six <laughs> i do were like you taller how you, than tj or were you taller I, than jesus why do i keep getting you and jesus confused <laughs> were you taller than jesus uh, I do like how you brought this up and explained it as uh, the other side of the coin, because that's how I feel as, you know, I, if you can't tell, I fall more on the Calvinist side. Um, but I really like I think there are places in Scripture where it's not clear. Mm-hmm. It's not clear. Sometimes it kind of looks like Calvinism. Sometimes it kind of looks like Arminianism. And sometimes it kind of looks like both. And, you know, we're not supposed to fully understand, you know, we're supposed to know God and be able to relate to him. But if we can figure out God, then God's not big enough. And that's part of the reason why you went to a conference with so many different perspectives is because there are people who they see God differently or not yeah. at all, which yeah. that's a different story. Yeah, that is. Um, We can have peace with you. Um, <laughs> yes. I uh, I. Here, here's here's my thing. Uh, what I find interesting is that Calvinism and Arminianism typically fall under the quote unquote orthodox camp. Still, both of them, 
Whereas process theology seems to fall more into this unorthodox, oh, they're outside of the realm. And I find that a little weird because mm. there is still biblical evidence for some of what they're saying, even sure. if I disagree with it. Sure. Yeah. But overall, what's what's the line for God? What's the line for God? Yeah. Uh, God what, exists. What do they have to believe? God exists. Uh, God is personal. I'm, I'm going to put my stakes down on that, that God has to be a person who wants to relate with humans and not a force or an a, a energy, if you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. At least those two. If I sat down and wrote a whole paper on it, I could probably come up with more, but I'm going to put those two yeah. down. So don't make me, don't make me look too conservative because I definitely have more than two. TJ, <laughs> what do you got? Well, I think you have, have to believe God is God. Mm-hmm. God is yeah. good. God is good. God is great. You know, let me clean this plate. Thank you for the food. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if believe God is God, you have to believe God sent Jesus to us to atone for our sins. You have to believe that God did that. I don't know if that's necessarily relevant, because how would you do one without the other? But mm-hmm. for me, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Brandon, you had more? I, I thought of one more that I'm definitely willing to say. You have to believe this. Uh, God is holy. I Ooh, think you have good. to have the holiness of yeah. God, because it is the only trait that is repeated three times of all what of is his holy? character is. Holy? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if you've ever seen a block of cheese, it's worth the switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, holiness, I would, again, simply define it without doing like extensive research. Uh, I would define it as a set apart distinction yeah. from everything else. I okay. would start there with holiness. Man, so God is distinctly dish. Oh, really? What's your definition <laughs> of holiness? No, 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 not the holiness. I have to add God is holy to my, to my list oh, okay. of things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I think that's really important. Okay. Uh, yeah. So God is real. Uh, God is holy now. Uh, God is love. I would say that mm-hmm. that is necessary for me that we agree. What is the meaning of life and all of that is that God is love, which is why he did all the things. That is God's motivating factor. So I think that's important. Um, then to me, I will also say I'm going to put first tier and this might make me the conservative of the group here. God is creator because to me, okay. God has no power over sin or life or death if he did not create it. So I think that's an important aspect as well. And I, and you don't have to believe God is exclusively transcendent. I'm okay with even God is in everything, whatever, but you have to have at least those four, which okay. I was going to say three, but then holiness was so good. <laughs> it's so important. And of yeah, course we could probably come up with more. Yeah. God being good, the love of God. I agree. Those are all additional yeah. ones that we need to have yeah but uh god's pronouns third tier you know god, sure. whether or not you know um god caused the flood god punishes all that kind of you know some of that second some of it's first there's a lot of different things but but mm-hmm. there's too much to god to to go down the list but that is where i keep my first tier yeah we're gonna build, get a really really big whiteboard and like draw it out mm. and we'll yeah. post it We'll oh, we should do a chalkboard. <laughs> that will sound better yeah. on on podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so a little scratching and yeah, yeah, yeah. We we always we always ask our guests for a single tangible action for our listeners to take that would help maintain church unity. And I'm I'm going to give one today. Here's my single tangible action. Um, because most of our listeners are conservative tradition traditional believers, I want to challenge you to read a book about open and relational theology. Don't agree with it. You don't have to change your beliefs or anything. What I want you to do is read something that you disagree with on a fundamental level and really use that opportunity to think, what extent can you still call someone brother and sister? Where are your lines? I think it's an important exercise to go through. This was really helpful for me with you two today. And I I think it'll be really beneficial because as you think about what can people be wrong about, where is your lines, you realize you should be loving people a lot more than you currently are based off your own definitions, probably. Um, And of course, if you aren't on the more liberal process theologian side, I'm I'm sure you're aware of more conservative beliefs, but I would still say, try to pick up a more thoughtful conservative thinkers writings. You know, um, maybe look at Russell Moore's writings. He seems to be a little bit more moderate and is very thankful, 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 man, that's a hard word. Sounds like thankful, thoughtful. Thank you. Um, and, and how he presents some of his beliefs of subs, penal substitution and all that kind of stuff. Eloquent, I think, might be the exact word you were looking for. That's good, too. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. For me, so, I'll do I'll do both. 
I'll do both as well. So if you are more in the conservative camp, I would encourage you to read the book Blue Like Jazz by Donald Miller, because that was the book that helped me uh, become more comfortable with exploring other um, liberal, progressive theological beliefs. It's not a liberal theology textbook. It is uh, the story of a man growing in his theology and it just happens to be on the more liberal side so it helps me give that a read and piggybacking off of josh for the more liberal progressive audience uh, i would say give rc sproul a read Mm. or listen to he is dead now sorry tj uh he is (laughs) dead now but uh that is where i the reason i bring that up is that he is the one who influenced me on this whole God has to be holy. Like that is a big part of his writings is the holiness of God. I believe that is literally the title of one of his books. So go give that one a read. Both sides. Read a black theology of liberation by James H. Cohn. Uh, You'll be surprised how much of black liberal theology is conservative. And uh, Mm -hmm. those of you who are conservative, it'll challenge you. All right. So we like to start the end of our show with the God moment segment. We just like to take time to mentioned something God's been up to with our life recently, whether that's a blessing, challenge, mode of worship, anything like that. And I always make Joshua go first. Josh? I've been gifted 30 books that are all challenged. <laughs> I don't want you to read. <laughs> that's, my, that's my God challenge. All right. I'll go next. Uh, I recently was invited to an event that I was unable to attend and was still greeted with such warmth for these people I had never met that uh, they sent home many presents with uh, my friend who did <laughs> attend the event. Yeah. That's and true. That's, it's just that's nice. Cool. It is great. That's cool. Brandon, do you have a God moment for us? You know, it has been by Indiana standards, nice weather, although it did snow a little bit the last two days. Uh, nothing stuck, but it did snow. And so I've been taking my son Cooper for walks around the the town. We've got a nice little downtown area down the road from us, and we just go for walks, and he loves it he will just he is amazed by trees and so he just stares at the trees for like an hour and a half and he's a happy little boy so that's been that's been good time with my son and be able to kind of think and pray while i do those walks it's been good he's counting the leaves i used to do that (laughs) so if you enjoyed the episode uh please consider sharing with a friend or an enemy you can share with a cousin we like that share with your Mm -hmm. cousins that's true. If you don't have any, share them with my cousins. My cousins don't listen yet because I haven't shared with mine. I'm <laughs> That's funny. Dude. That's hilarious. Dude. And uh, if you want to hear more from TJ and I, uh, you can go to systematicology.org on the host drop down menu. It's both of our names. Everything we do is there. Not right now because I'm, you know, changing the website, but eventually it'll be back up and you'll find us there. Hooray. And check out one of our Patreon shows, Like Too Long Didn't Listen, which is where we record a little snippet of the summary it's 10 seconds summarizes the episode if you don't have time to check out the whole thing you can listen to the too long didn't listen also good for a laugh good for a laugh uh leaving a rating or review on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, or pod chaser uh makes it easier for others to find our show we'd appreciate it a lot i love being rated Mm -hmm. just a little tip about me either way it's just nice to know what people think one star two star five star don't give us a three i know you don't think we're a three yeah. Uh, and again, Spotify makes it incredibly easy to rate now. So. Mm-hmm. Thank Stupid. you for it. Right. Thank you for I actually rated our show while we were recording this one. <laughs> nice. So, you gave us a one? <laughs> thank you for listening to the Whole Church Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope you will be back with us next week. We're getting back with our Dividing Scripture series, discussing the character Elihu in the Book of Job and Redactor Criticism. After that, we will have another roundtable discussion, this time about church buildings how architecture Ooh. points to God and what our buildings should be being used for and whether the church should have buildings at all. <clears throat> then finally, at the end of season one, Francis Chan will be joining us. He doesn't and know over, that though. <laughs> and over on my seminary life, as you always know, you can drop down into the description to find links to all of the important things, except for a Patreon. We still don't have that. I've been putting that one off. He's getting I should, on it. <laughs> I should really make a Patreon, but there's plenty of other things like a shop. I have a shop. You can buy t-shirts and other cool things with the logo on it. Um, Like I said, you know what's coming up next week. It's going to be the launch of Intercultural Ministries, uh, talking about why it's important to study other cultures and to value them. And guys, I always like to close my episodes whenever I have guests. By by telling them about Francis Chan? No, (laughs) by... (laughs) 
by asking them a random question that has nothing to do with the rest of the episode. You do it at the front. I do it at the back because that's the way I run my show. And I've been asking this question during the Leadership 101, so I'm going to ask it here so Josh may know what it is. I will start with you, Josh. Where are the best places to get pizza in your area? Downtown Charlotte. There's this place called Benny's. Uh, There's a few others. One's in Charleston. One's in Virginia. But man, it's good. Benny's. What's good at Benny's? What am I getting? All of them. Pizza. I mean, pizza, (laughs) but... Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. They sold to do a cheese, a sausage, a pepperoni, and then they'll switch a veggie, and then they'll switch what the other one is. I always forget veggie because why on earth would you get veggie? True. But yeah, it, it, it's um, is it New York style or California style? I can't tell. New but York style. Large. Oh, flat, is that what you? Okay. Delicious. I like the sauce. It's a uh, not a sweet sauce. I don't like sweet sauces like Papa John's. Papa John's is garbage. I agree with that. Not that Papa John's is garbage, but the sweet sauce part, the sweet sauce part, I would disagree with that. Don't love it. Uh, Pizza Hut started adding cinnamon to their sauce. It makes it significantly worse than it used to be. Yeah, that sounds bad. TJ, you said also Benny's? Yeah, I was just agreeing with him. For him, it's Benny's. (laughs) Yeah, what about you? Probably Marco's. Oh. Marco's in our area does does good product. Okay. I think we have Marco's up here. Yeah. yeah, I've heard other things about other Marcos, but ours is good. Ours is really good. Nice. Yeah. As far as craft pizza, we have uh, actually, I don't know if you're aware, uh, LeBron James, that one, uh, okay. owns a pizza company. I did uh, not know I think that. it's called Blaze Pizza. It's like Chipotle or Subway. You walk in, tell them what you want on your pizza, and they make that. Oh. We, it's really we've good. Got, we've got something up here like that called Mod Pizza, M-O-D, where it's yeah. like, a, like a Chipotle, and you can get it made up the way you want to i guess technically you can do that with any pizza but it looks yeah cool but it's more fun to look at it. remember keep on studying thank you for listening to the whole church podcast remember you can help support our show by going to patreon.com forward slash the whole church podcast and sponsoring us for three dollars a month coming up next we will be having another divided scriptures episode where we are going to be discussing Elihu and redactor criticism in the book of Job.